I think of some Jewish soul on the deathbed with the rabbi sitting next to him and he's wanting to have favor. And he wants favor in the eyes of God because he's going to meet his maker and he wants to get right with God. And the rabbi says, okay, there's a verse in the Talmud. Uh, I want to, I want you to read it and believe it. And the poor man who has only a few breaths left says, well, what is it you want me to say, rabbi? And the rabbi says, say this, may my death make atonement for my sins. And the poor dying man says, may my death make atonement for my sins. And then with uh, the grim reaper closing in on him, it's appointed unto men once to die and then the judgment. With the lights in the room grow growing oh, dimmer and dimmer, with each breath getting more difficult, with each heartbeat slowing down slightly, with the room starting to spin from elevated blood pressure, and with the ebbing of life flowing out of his body, he thinks that he has found favor in the eyes of Hashem. And he's going to meet his maker and his maker is going to smile on him. He hopes. Now on Sunday, we're going to go in and preach to a bunch of Muslims. They hope they find favor with Allah through fasting for Ramadan, eating halal food, praying five times a day, making the Hajj, all this stuff. And all over the world, there are Sikhs and Hindus and people of all kinds of religion, and they're trying to find favor in the eyes of God. And they think that works, uh, philanthropy, whatever, will gain them favor in the eyes of God. But in the Torah, we are told plainly that unless that little lamb dies and his blood is shed, we can't get out of bondage in Egypt. Without the shedding of that lamb's blood, there is no exodus. We are stuck in our homes in Egypt, and the firstborn is going to be slain by the angel of death. And there's no exodus, there's no deliverance, there's no redemption. It is the shedding of that little lamb's blood that is all important to get us across the threshold, which has blood on it across the Red Sea, across the wilderness, across the Jordan, and into the Promised Land. Abraham believed in God, and God counted his faith as righteousness. Not his works, his faith. And Yitzhak said, where is the lamb of the burnt offering father? And Abraham said, well, the Lord will provide the lamb. And he did provide that lamb. And each household had one. And when the lambs were dying, the lamb of God, the Moshiach, Isaiah 53, 7. Don't say that's talking about Israel. Israel is said to be a blind servant of the Lord. But the servant of the Lord in Isaiah 53 is the servant who sees. He's not blind. He sees his seed. So there is a blind servant, and then there's a seeing servant, a servant that is sighted, that has eyes to see. And that servant is from among his people. Divari chapter 18, verse 15. One of your own brothers 
A prophet like me will arise. You must listen to him. Or you or it will be you will be accountable for it. It'll be bad. It's gonna be you're gonna be held to account if you don't listen to him. So he is one of our people, but he's not one of our blind people. He's one of our people who is a sighted servant, servant of the Lord that Moses talked about, that one, he will be the lamb that is led to the slaughter, Isaiah 53, 7. So when the lambs die, he dies. That's the 14th. And then it says, on the day after the rest day, whenever that 14th occurs, whenever it is in the week, doesn't matter, in one day, two days, three days, whatever, there's going to be a Shabbos. And on the day after that Shabbos, there is going to be something called Yom Hapikarim. It says, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When you come into the land which I give unto you, Leviticus chapter 23, verse 10, and shall reap the harvest, that, that's the first spring barley harvest, then you shall bring a sheaf, an omer, of the first fruits of your harvest unto the Kohen, and he shall he shall elevate, lift up, and wave the omer before the Lord to for the sake of your finding favor in the eyes of Hashem. On the moral, on the morrow, on the on the on the Tomorrow, the tomorrow after the Shabbos, the priest will wave it. So a sheep was actually an omer, about two quarts, presented to the Lord on the second day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The waving by the priest before the Lord may have involved making the sign that we know. This token offering was accompanied by burnt grain and drink offerings. The ceremony acknowledged God as the real author of all the land's crops by making a representative presentation of the crops to God, thereby consecrating those crops to him. The concept of first fruits is found in Genesis chapter 1, verse 3. I'm sorry, verse uh, 11, 12, 13, along in there. It's, it's the third day. It's, it's, uh, it refers to the, the first fruits of the Spirit, the first fruits of the resurrection. It refers to the first fruit, the first fruits of the resurrection, Moshiach ben Dovid. 1 Corinthians 15.20. It refers to believers who are born again. Uh, Yaakov chapter 1 verse 18. And to the, to the group that has been redeemed in an area. The, these are the first fruits of that area. And so... I want to go back and make sure I said that very clearly. The lambs are slaughtered on the 14th of Nisan. The next day is a rest day, whatever the day it is, the 15th, of course. I'm talking about whatever day of the week it is, the 15th. And then the day after that, and of course, on that year, 33 uh, CE, uh, 3793, the day after that was Yom uh, Harishon, uh, or Sunday. 
Now, it might have been a different day, but on that year, it was Sunday. That's what I was trying to say while ago. I didn't say it very clearly. So, you have the 14th, the first Seder, <coughs> excuse me, the second uh, day, which is the 15th of Nisan, where there's a second Seder, and then the day after that, and that is Yom Habikarim, and that is when the Kohen goes and he waves the Omer, the sheet, before the Lord. For the sake of your finding favor in God's eyes. How do I know I'm going to heaven? Do I look in the mirror and see, oh man, you're such a righteous guy. You did so many good deeds today. You must surely be going to heaven. No, I do not do it that way. I'm a sinner saved by grace. I don't see that in me. I don't see that my good deeds are getting any favor from God. I've only done my duty. I don't have any merit. The only one who has merit is the Moshiach. He never committed a sin. And he died in my place. And how do I know that uh, his death was accepted by God? Because he stood up on the third day, on Yom Abi Karim on Nisan 16, 3793, Yom Harishon, Sunday, he stood up and for the sake of his first fruits elevated, being elevated from the grave, his body did not see Shahab, Psalm 1610. He's the first fruits of the resurrection. He is elevated. He's hoisted up by the Kohen. But he himself is the Kohen Le'olam of Yivra T. Melchizedek. And his resurrected body is the first fruits of the resurrection. And this is God's signal to me that I have found favor with God based on him and him alone, not on me. He is my substitute. He is, he is my proxy. I was at a cab today speaking to a Sikh. And I said, you know, your guru is in the graveyard. My guru is not in the graveyard. And I said, do, do you know what is coming up on Sunday, what we're celebrating? And I witnessed to him. How can we have favor with God? And you know, Job, he said, I know that my Redeemer lives. Uh, praise God. The oldest book in the Bible, the oldest book ever written is the book of Job. And I thank God for the book of Job. And I thank God that Although there are miserable comforters who come to our bedside and say, here, read this from the Talmud. May my death make atonement for my sins. And uh, my death will not make atonement for my sins. I am a sinner and I deserve to die. The wages of sin is death. I am a descendant of Adam. I die because he died and brought death into the world and he sinned and his first son was in his likeness and I am in his likeness and that means I have an innate sinful nature this is the doctrine of Het Kadmon so with my sinful nature since sin brings its wage, which is death, I'm going to die. And my death will not atone for my sins. However, there is one 
whose death will atone for my sins. I can get out of Egypt. Why? Because that lamb died and his blood gets me out, just like the lamb's blood on the threshold made the exit possible for all those Jews, those Hebrews who left Egypt. And I know that he is my advocate. Uh, he is my witness. Uh, Job 16, 19. He is my mohia, my mohiach. Uh, Job 9, 33. He is my goal, my goal, goalie, my goal, my redeemer. Job 19, 25. And uh, I might make intercession for my friends, like Job did at the end, like Moshiach did, hanging on the tree when he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He had made an Asham uh, offering with his nephesh that was approved by God, that, that satisfied God. And uh, and this, this was uh, a, an offering for sins that you've committed unwittingly. He's saying unwittingly, they don't know what they're doing. They're mocking uh, and they don't know what's happening here. So have mercy on them and forgive them. He made intercession, which is what Job does in Job 42, seven and eight. And this heavenly figure in heaven that Job sees, Job 16, 19, his uh, advocate, uh, his witness, is his heavenly figure who vouches for him. And at last, he stands on the earth and Job is bodily resurrected, chapter 19, verse 25. And like that other heavenly messianic figure, the, the Malik Hashem, the angel of the Lord, in Job 33, 23, we see this heavenly Malik, this, this uh, messenger, this Melitz, this mediator, this Melitz Yosher, coming to Job's defense. However, he does more than, than that. He provides a priestly kofair, a ransom, K-O-F-E-R, kaf, holam, fe, segal, reish. And that ransom redeems Job's soul from going down into the pit Job 33, 28. And you really need to see what Moshiach was speaking about in Mark 10, 45. And what Job was speaking about in Job 33, 24 and Job 36, 18. The ransom, the kofair. The bride had to be ransomed. He purchased her. I'm talking about Boaz purchasing the uh, bride, Ruth, and seeing his seed, the, the seed of Malon and Elimelech, that had to be ransomed and uh, became the progenitor of David and of Moshiach ben David. Uh, and where do you see this? And in, in, in Isaiah 53, after his anguish of his nephesh, his neshama, Hashem sees and is satisfied. Now, there was a terrible storm at sea. Why? Because of an errant prophet named Jonah. He was running from the Lord. He had told the sailors, I'm running from the Lord. They didn't understand that. They didn't even know who he was. 
But when those storm clouds started uh, brewing in the atmosphere and the waves started rising and uh, that terrible tempest was was starting to throw the boat around, the wrath of God was revealed from heaven, and they said, oh, no, we're in trouble. We're all going to die. So the captain goes down into the uh, hole of the ship, and he says, hey, awake, O sleeper. Says, who are you? What is your occupation? You know, we already know. You told us you're running from God, but we got to know what you're doing here because we're going to die here, and you got to do something. If you're in trouble with God, I mean, come on, tell us what's going on. We don't want to die, too. And so Jonah gave them the secret for their salvation. He says, you coist me, you elevate me, you know, and you toss me into the, the sea. And then the sea will calm down and God's wrath or reveal from heaven will be pacified. And I will die, but you will live. I will be the vicarious human sacrifice that saves you. Now, when you say, oh, in Judaism, we don't believe in human sacrifice. Well, if you've created a religion that is uh, built on something other than the Tanakh, I'm sorry, your religion and you will perish together. These are the inerrant words of Almighty God. And there was a saying somewhere, no sign will be given to this wicked and adulterous generation except that sign. If you take the bar and nose who comes on the glory clouds and all people's Nations and tongues will worship him as deity and serve and worship him, pay Lamed Het worship. Although Daniel's friends will not worship the idols of Nebuchadnezzar, all peoples will worship the Barinosh, who is not an idol. Well, you take that Barinosh and you elevate him like the Omer is being elevated here by the Kohen. And you hoist him up and throw him into the field for into the belly of the earth for three days and three nights, or any any part of a day being counted as a day. And the wrath of God, which is revealed from heaven, will be lifted off of you. And your ship will come home. It will not sink. Not based on your death, but based on his death. Because like Yonah Hanavi, he went into the belly of the earth and died for you. For your acceptance that you might find favor in God's eyes. And that was the reason he died. It was for the sake of your finding favor in God's eyes. Mortimer Schmuel Bergman got the translation right. Jehoash did not. You have to be born again. You, you need a prophetic help to translate the Bible. It cannot be done by unsaved people. Lord, I want to pray right now that even though it is very difficult for me to preach, and if I could preach this sermon again, I would preach it again because I could do it better. But I know that on Nisan 14, 3793, the lambs were slain and my lamb that gets me out of bondage and out of death was slain. And then on the 15th, which was the rest day, 
And then the day after that, which was in that year, Yom HaRishon, or Sunday, when the Kohen went into the base Hamikdash with the Omer and waved it before the Lord, in order, as Moses says, for the sake of your finding favor in the eyes of Hashem. Yes, he stood up alive. The Kohen Le'olam of Ibrati Melchizedek, having made his offering of his nephesh, and God was satisfied. It says that. Just as Jonah said, look, you throw me overboard and God will be satisfied and this storm, this tempest will cease. The waves will calm down and you will be saved. God will be satisfied if you throw me overboard. Well, look, a, a great fish came and swallowed Jonah and three days later spit him out where he was supposed to be in Nineveh. You say, well, I don't believe that. That's just a myth. And the idea of Moshiach ben Dovid standing up on the third day, that's a myth too. My friends, these sober Orthodox Jews gave their lives. They went through terrible suffering. They were telling the truth. They saw him alive. Yosef Chai. He was thought to be dead, but he came back on the third day, like Jonah. And I want to pray that on Sunday morning, when preachers all over the world are preaching, people will come to faith. And that rabbis will go and open the Torah to Leviticus 23, verses 10, 11, and 12, and they will see what I'm talking about here. And they will go to YiddishBible.net and they will look at the Brit HaDashah in Yiddish. And very soon I'll be able to have it also in the, in the, the Tanakh. Hallelujah. And Lord, we pray that somebody will be convicted. I can never know for sure that I have favor in the eyes of the Lord by looking inwardly, by looking at my own goodness or my own merit. I can't, I can't get it that way. I'm looking at him. He was lifted up on the third day, the day after the rest day, after Nisan 14. He was lifted up. Hallelujah. And then seven weeks later, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And their evidence of that was they spoke in other languages, and they turned the whole world upside down. Father, I want to pray right now in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach that someone will come to faith today and that preachers will get their message ready today for Sunday and that a great resurrection will be preached on Sunday and that people will rise from the tombs of their old life. Sinners, people coming out of jail, people in jail, people who know they should be in jail, people who know they're sinners will find acceptance with God and favor with God and know that their sins are forgiven, not based on their works, but on what he did. And we give you all the glory and all the praise. Moshiach ben Dovid, come into my heart, forgive my sins, take control of my life, circumcise my ears, my eyes, and my heart with the moral knife of the Ruach HaKodesh. Make me Jewish on the inside. Make me circumcised and spiritually born again and resurrected. Elevate my spirit from the dead. Give me a new spirit, a Lev Hadash and a Ruach HaDashah. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and change me and regenerate me. And we pray that every Muslim will know what it means that God can remove you and put in your place a new creation.